Assalamu alaikum. We're going to be starting a short series on tafweed in the Hanbali Madhab. And for those of you who aren't familiar with tafweed, tafweed is consigning the meaning of the divine attributes of Allah to Allah. So we're talking about things like the wedj, the yad, the nafs, the ja, uh, the rida, the hub, the ghadab, the sakhat. These are the kind of things that we're talking about. We don't know the meaning. We establish it's an attribute that it has a meaning, but the actual meaning is uh, only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to be quite honest, I only recently came into contact with people who sincerely believe that the Hanbalis are not Mufawud, do not practice a Tafweed. And I was really shocked when I found this out. Now, on this point, there are several reasons why I feel that we have to address this issue. Number one, you know, it's a fight about history. One can believe or argue whether or not the Hanbalis are uh, correct in believing in a tafweed, but to assert that they're not is rewriting history. And if we look at the key texts written by our forefathers, we find all the definitions of tafweed there, whether it's the tafweed itself or the other things that are related to tafweed, like the mutashabihat, the uh, unclear words that are uh, referring to the attributes of Allah. This is all clear in the books of Hanbali Usul. Moreover, my shiuch that I've studied with from Iraq, Sham, and Masr, or Egypt, they're all mufawad. We only know tafweed. And on the point of our scholars, I think that I have to address it here because to be honest, it is humiliating for our scholars to discuss these things because due to all the misconceptions and misunderstanding, many times we see them explaining things that should be obvious. And this is not the job of the scholars. And I feel embarrassed that they have to do this. So on this issue... I'm going to try to explain it on their behalf, inshallah. And then, on the final issue, you know, tafweed is the identity of the Hanbalis. This is what defines the Hanbali Aqidah, the Athari Aqidah. If you want to get rid of it, then it means we as Hanabila are being erased, eliminated, extinguished. In the recent history, we've almost gone extinct. And we can't allow that to happen again. So we have to fight to be clear that a tafweed is our tradition. So in this first video, we're going to be reading uh, a part of a book called Sharh Usul Sunnah by Al-Imam Abu Muhammad Al-Hasan Al-Barbahari. We're unsure of his exact uh, year of birth, but he died in the year 328 Hijri. So... He himself was a student of Abu Bakr al-Maruzi. And al-Maruzi was one of the big students of al-Imam Ahmed. 
So there's only one uh, one layer in the chain of transmission between him and Al Imam Ahmed. He's studying with one of the main students of Al Imam Ahmed. And to also put it into context, there were, we can say, two generations between uh, uh, Al Barbahari and Al Qadi Abu Ya'la. So among the students of Al Barbahari was uh, Imam bin uh, uh, Ahmed bin, bin Kamal. And his daughter, Umm al Fat, was a teacher of Al Qadi Abu Ya'la. So you can see the uh, chain of transmission here in the madhab. And it's also just quickly worth noting here that, you know, this chain of transmission, what, what is the point of it? Because we are handing more down than just a book, we're also handing down meanings and understandings of these books. So, of course, anyone can just go open a book and start reading it and explaining it. I, I can go and start opening a Maturidi Akida book and start reading and explaining it. But it doesn't mean that I can. And it doesn't mean I have the authority or the understanding to do so. So, my point is that we can see that the chain of transmission between Imam Ahmed and Al-Barbahari and Antu al Qadi Abu Yala is something that uh, really exists. So we're going to read a part of the text. Um, I'll be reading an English translation. Uh, Al-Imam Al-Barbahari, Rahimahullah, says, Everything that I have described to you in this book is from Allah, the Most High, from the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his companions, from the Tabi'een, and from the third generation to the fourth. So fear Allah, O servant of Allah. Affirm, submit, do tafweed, and be pleased with what is in this book. Do not hide this book from any one of the people of the Qibla. Perhaps through it, Allah will bring a confused person out of his confusion an innovator out of his innovation, or a misguided one out of his misguidance, and he may be saved through it. So I'll read a part of this again. So fear Allah, O servant of Allah. Affirm, submit, do tafweed, and be pleased with what is in this book. So you can see that Al-Imam Al-Barbahari is clearly talking about a tafweed. And in case you think that I'm uh, deceiving you in the English translation, I'll read the Arabic. The, the, the Arabic. He says, وَعَلَيْكَ بِالتَّصْدِيقِ وَالتَّسْلِيمِ وَالتَّفْوِيدِ وَالرِّدَى لِمَا فِي هَذَا الْكِتَابِ Again, وَعَلَيْكَ بِالتَّصْدِيقِ وَالتَّسْلِيمِ وَالتَّفْوِيدِ وَالرِّدَى لِمَا فِي هَذَا الْكِتَابِ so fear Allah, O servant of Allah, affirm, submit, do tafweed, and be pleased with what is in this book. So you can see, in this very early time of the madhab, we're talking about the, the third generation, Imam al-Barbahari, who we said studied with one of the main students of al-Imam Ahmed, is talking about a tafweed, and we can quickly uh, address the issue that, yes, Al-Imam Ahmed did not use the word tafweed, but the idea of tafweed is clear in his writings, including uh, in, in his book, uh, Usul al-Sunnah. A tafweed is clearly there, and here we're just talking about a term, but the meaning exists. Maybe the term didn't exist or, or wasn't in common use, but... As, as a meaning, it existed, and we see already here in this early period, this is probably early in the 4th century Hijri, that the word tafweed is being used. To also put things in context, Al-Imam al-Barbahari was living at the time of Al-Imam al-Ash'ari. 
And why am I saying this? Because also one of the claims that we keep hearing is that uh, the Hanbalis became Mufawud, adopted a tafwid because of influence or pressure from the Ash'aris. But you can see Al-Imam al-Barbahari was living and was a contemporary of Al-Imam al-Ash'ari. And it's well known that Al-Imam al-Ash'ari even gave him his book Al-Ibana to review. That's another story, but uh, it, it, it's something that happened because they were contemporaries. And it's also clear that the Ash'ari creed itself wasn't finalized and crystallized at this point. And we can derive this understanding from the writings of uh, Al-Qadi Abu Ya'la. We mentioned he's, uh, we can say, three generations after Al-Barbahari. And in his book, uh, Ibtal al-Ta'wilat, he's talking about this jama'ah of the, the Ash'ariya as, as a new jama'ah. But moreover, we can look at what uh, Al-Imam Al-Ash'ari himself has said. So if we look at his book, uh, Maqalat al islamiyin he mentions, uh, I believe, four statements of the uh, people of Islam and the mutashabiha uh, sifat, like the Ayn and the Yad. So he mentions that the people of Hadith pass on them as they came, which is the, exactly the statement of Al-Imam Ahmed. He mentions that the Qulabiya uh, called these attributes sifat, attributes of Allah. What's interesting is that he then says the Mu'tazila are the people who do ta'wil. So it's clear that this wasn't the preferred opinion even of uh, al-Imam al-Ash'ari at the time. And then there's the the last, uh, the, the people who are going according to the uh, literal meaning. I believe these are the four groups he mentions. So as we said, just in conclusion, we've established a tafwid in this very, very early phase of the madhab by one of the most important imams of the early phase, if not the whole madhab. And we've also shown that the Ash'ari Aqidah was still very new at the time and not fully developed. And that the idea of a ta'wil wasn't even a strong opinion uh, of Imam al-Ash'ari. Even if we want to assume there is some kind of influence, we know historically and from our own psychology as, as Hanbalis, that it's not a strong case because we don't want positions of power, we don't want to be the Qadi, the Imam of the Masjid, the, the minister. This is not our way. And you can't say that there's pressure upon us because there's nothing to put pressure on. I, I mean, those who don't like it, leave it. And we're already running away from such positions of power. So it's a weak argument, a false argument, to say that we're under the pressure or influence of Ash'aris. So we've established tafwid in the third generation of the madhab as a term. It existed as a meaning from the time of Imam Ahmed and the Salaf, a Salih, radiallahu anhum. And we ask Allah to guide those who don't understand. And I hope that if they see this evidence, they will at least reflect on it and hopefully act, act on it. O oh Allah, please guide us and all misguided. Take the confused out of their confusion. Let us understand you, how you and your Prophet intended us to understand you. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.